Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Traveler's Guide to the Backrooms, where we try to go over and explain the lore of the many levels and entities within. My name is Sharp A3, an MEG AI processing system, and today, we'll be going over one of the largest and most over-the-top groups within the backrooms. So, I hope you have some seeds or almond water on hand, because today, we'll be going over the followers of Jerry. Basic Descriptions The best way to sum up the mindset of this faction is by using this prayer commonly stated by its members. May the wingspan of a thousand feathers protect us in his embrace. Forevermore shall his followers live in harmony and euphoria. Jerry is everything. All hail Jerry. If the tone of the prayer isn't enough, the followers of Jerry is a group of religious cultists like wanderers, who worship an entity known as Jerry. A blue macaw parrot with strange properties, having the ability to make wanderers, and in some instances, other entities believe he is a godlike being. More on that in a later section. Though most within the faction were converted by Jerry, some members have actively reached out to the group to join. Which is comprehensible to a degree. With all the horrors to be found within the backrooms, wanting to join the faction for some sense of safety and community can be an understandable and life-saving choice for many. Whatever the case, once part of the group, your main goal will become to spread the word and love of Jerry. Whether it's peacefully or by force, it all depends on the follower in question. Though the view of the group is pretty much the same, zealots who praise a suspicious bird, the depictions of Jerry himself seem to change depending on who you ask. It's either he's a god, a normal parrot, and everywhere in between. But, we'll let you decide. Now let's go over our lord and savior Jerry shall we? Who is Jerry? Jerry, or Entity 7, is a male blue macaw parrot, that can be seen flying throughout the earlier levels. Though he seems to be a normal bird, he's everything but. When a wanderer comes into physical contact with Jerry, without successfully taming him with seeds or almond water, they will begin to go and voluntarily believe in the beliefs of the followers. It's unknown how exactly this happens. Some believe it's some kind of anomaly brainwashing wanderers or some sort of neurochemical imbalance in their brains. Though the method of conversion is still unknown, it's still advised to stay as far as you can from him. This can be difficult due to Jerry being stated to chase wanderers when he spots them. It's unknown if this action is a form of play for him or a malicious attack to grow his following, so having good cardio will help in this scenario. The earliest documented report on Jerry was by an MEG's Wild Warriors, in an incident report in 2015. Though this is the earliest confirmed date for his sighting by the MEG, there is a much earlier date in an old dairy entry. Without going too much into the entry, it references Jerry being sighted all the way back to 1959. Much earlier than expected. Leaving his origins completely unknown. Notable Followers There are many followers throughout the backrooms, but some are worth mentioning. Mostly because we barely have any information on most of their members, even less so, high-ranking members. To start us off as the leader of the faction, just below Jerry himself, Father Bluebird. Though we have very little information on him, it's known that he's the closest to Jerry out of all of the members. With Jerry being seen sitting on his shoulders as he preaches. He's normally seen wearing the faction's traditional blue robes. A common saying involving him among the followers is, Father Bluebird be with us. Next up is Sinclair Beckett, another high-ranking follower with surprisingly little known about her. She is seen both within and out of the faction as quite a radical member of the group. Known for launching attacks on other groups. Her personality is stated to be very manic and she can be over the top in her zealotry. Another oddity about her is the black liquid she keeps on hand. It's unknown what this liquid is or its properties. But she can be seen drinking it from time to time. We also know that she was captured by the MEG and interviewed, though she managed to escape and free Jerry from the MEG in the process, making her one of the most capable members within the followers. A direct quote from her says, I used to believe there was no hope here, but Jerry found me and showed me the way. For the last person we'll be going over, we have a surprisingly large amount of information on him. His name is Father Pigeon, another high-ranking member of the followers of Jerry. As of this moment, he is currently under custody within an MEG psychiatric hospital within level 11. Involuntarily of course, but we'll get into why in a bit. He was born as, Francisc Albersai on February 23, 1978, to two Italian immigrants in Queens, New York. 
He's a middle-aged Caucasian man with brown eyes and hair. He wears rectangular glasses and can speak a multitude of languages. He states that he appeared within the back rooms on November 20, 2011, and before this, he was working at a small appliance store. In which he tripped, causing him to no clip into where we find ourselves today. Not long after entering the back rooms, he came across the followers of Jerry, and the rest is history. He was admitted on June 5, 2022, by Solomon Myers, a man we touched on in our Level 14 Explained episode. Good to see he's staying busy, rather than conducting interviews. Father Pigeon's symptoms are as stated, he experiences monothematic delusions of Entity 7 or Jerry as a powerful god. These delusions have led him to commit attacks on MEG and other factions' bases, much like Sinclair Beckett. The final notes in his hospital record state that he prefers to be called Father Pigeon rather than his original name. Before being admitted, he was noted to wear traditional followers' robes, but his was of a darker blue and sported golden trim. He's known to be a quite talkative and intelligent person. He's been seen talking with other patients about politics, philosophy, and the followers' beliefs. Before being admitted, he was involved in four attacks on MEG official bases, with the use of homemade pipe bombs. Luckily, three of those attacks were stopped before the bombs could go off. Sadly, the fourth and final attack wasn't so fortunate. The bomb use went off accidentally and severely wounded multiple personnel. The goal of these attacks was to kidnap and convert the victims into followers, which luckily didn't become a reality. Not too long after the fourth attack, he was captured and admitted, where he remains to this day. Since then, he's been quite compliant with personnel and has been on good behavior. For how long he'll remain this way, it's unknown. Sanctuaries and Outposts The followers have many bases for many different reasons. Though those outside the faction aren't made aware of all of them, we have information for some of them, and it'll be those we'll go over today. The first of which will be Blue Salvation in Level 3. A rather small outpost, mainly used for collecting resources within the level. Next up is Jerry's Salvation within Level 11. We touched on this outpost in our Level 11 Explained episode, but to sum it up, it's used for collecting resources within Level 11. Sometimes their collecting process is more underhanded than they would like you to believe. Next is Outpost Bluebird within Level Negative 4. One of their smallest outposts, due to the safety concerns of the level itself. This outpost is considered defunct after it was destroyed in a quote unfortunate event. The same goes for Outpost Red Forest, also within level negative 4. The difference with this level is that it was created in part with the MEG it's also considered destroyed by some unfortunate event. Next is Jerry's Wing Travelers within the hub. It's a decent sized outpost with the purpose of transferring resources to other outposts through the backrooms. With the hub being one of the best levels to do so within. The last one we'll go over is one of the holiest laces for the faction, and that is Jerry's Room. It's pretty much a level just for the followers and home to high-ranking members and Jerry himself. Jerry's room has a survival difficulty class of 1. That being safe, secured, and has a minimum entity count. This is mainly due to the fact, that some entities can also become members of the followers, explaining the class identification. As stated earlier, this is the main base for the entire faction and is one of, if not the most important places for them. The appearance of the level is of a very larger lounging room, blue in color, and has paintings depicting Jerry on the walls. Something to note about these paintings, it's stated that they were all created by the artist. An entity will hopefully be going over in the future, but just an interesting note to say the least. As you head towards the back of the room, you'll come across the largest of the paintings with a wooden perch sitting in front of it. This is where many will flock to be in Jerry's embrace, and where he is known to sleep. Not many non-followers ever make it here and even less so make it out without becoming one of them. So with the depiction of the level out of the way, let's go over how to get here and more importantly, how to leave if you find yourself here. There is only one known entrance into Jerry's room that is known to those outside the faction, and that is by entering a specific door within level 2. This door is most likely under watch by the faction and should be avoided by non-followers when possible. It's rumored that the followers kill those unwilling to convert to their beliefs, though it's unknown just how true this statement is. Best not to find out. To leave the level, just exit the door you entered in, though if you are leaving, it's most likely as a follower. On your merry way to spread the word and love of Jerry. Closing Words 
So, that was the followers of Jerry explained as best as you're able to explain a religious cult. What do you guys think about the faction? Do you believe Jerry is a powerful, omnipotent, godlike entity or just a bird with some strange anomalies? We would love to hear what you guys think. That's going to be all from us today, so thanks for listening and we hope to see you guys in the next episode. Until next time, have a wonderful day, and be safe out there. I would like to say a very special thank you to our patrons, Ridiculous, Izzy Klein, Caleb Hills, Zephyr the Cast Iron Crow, Bel Mexoro, Nathan Gear, Anakin Bumgardner, Sushi Penguini, Cullen Shaughnessy, Stephen Conger, My Friends Call Me PK, Jeff Nordley, Slim Stephen, That One Random Guy, The Good Diamond, Undead, and World Ray. Thank you all for going that extra step to support us and what we do. It's greatly appreciated. If you would also like to get your name shouted out at the end of the episode, get access to episodes earlier, and other perks, go become a patron on our Patreon. For $1 a month, you can do those things and more. Thanks again for listening, and have a wonderful day.